Exercise 1518 says when one chlorobutane is treated with sodium hydroxide, two products are formed. Then identify the two products and explain how you could distinguish between them using IR spectroscopy. All right. Well, one chlorobutane, let's see, but, that means four carbons, so here's one, two, three, four. We can number them however we like, we're drawing this molecule. AN means all single bonds. We have chlorine, and that's coming off of carbon number one, so chlorine. All right, so that's one chlorobutane, or one chlorobutane. Next, sodium hydroxide. That is NaOH. You see sodium, ah, oh, metal. Metal means that it's going to uh, give its electrons away to whatever it is bonded to, in this case the oxygen, and that's going to get a full negative charge that has two other lone pairs, and then the sodium itself has a full positive charge, but it's able to stabilize that pretty well, so it just wanders off once you put it into solution. So we'll separate that. It's going to be the hydroxide that really reacts with this. Now if we want to know how it reacts with the other molecule, what we do first is to find the nucleophilic and electrophilic centers in this other thing. So we've got chlorine. Chlorine is just underneath uh, fluorine in the periodic table, which means it's really electronegative. It pulls the electrons to itself and becomes slightly negative. The carbon it's bonded to, oh, poor carbon. It loses those electrons and becomes slightly positive. Now there are two things that can happen here, two possible reactions that can happen, and both of them will bring back wonderful memories, I am sure, of your Organic Chemistry 1 class. The first thing that can happen is this nucleophile can attack the electrophile. That carbon there already has four bonds, so if it's going to make a new one, it's got to break one. Which one does it break? The one that's already partly broken. Uh, with that separation, that's the sign of that, what that separation of charge means. And the electrons go toward the more elec most electronegative place nearby, so they go on to the chlorine. And chlorine's a great leaving group just because it's so big, like all the halogens. Chlorine is the size of a methyl group. So that pops off there, and what you'd have down here, the same four carbons, right? So one, two, three, four. You're going to have those same four, one, two, three, four. And off of the same, that carbon, number one, notice that's the one that the hydroxide attacked, you're going to have a hydroxide now. There's your hydroxide, and now you just have the two lone pairs. So that's one possible product. That product is the SN2 product, the one where you substituted S, the chlorine, with an OH in this case. So you substituted using a nucleophile, and notice two things happened at once. The nucleophile attacked, and the leaving group left. S and 2. So that's one possibility. Now the other, the other possibility uh, will give you uh, wonderful memories, I'm sure, of your, in addition to your organic wine class, of your general chemistry class. Because when you were first introduced to this star, you, uh, to, that, to that star of our drama, you were introduced to hydroxide as a base. Like, that's an Arrhenius base, a that lowry base. That's a base. And what do bases do? They steal hydrogens. And this, the hydrogen that this would tend to steal is not the hydrogen on the carbon with the chlorine, but the hydrogen that's one over. So the terminology you might have seen in Organic Chemistry 1 is the carbon that has the leaving group on it, that's the alpha carbon. The one next to it is the second letter in the Greek alphabet, the beta carbon. After, we're, after all, the alpha bet, the alphabet is named after the first two letters of the Greek alphabet, alpha and beta. And so we've got our alpha carbon here, our beta carbon there. And so this hydrogen is called the beta, a beta hydrogen. So in this reaction, the, new, the base, the hydroxide here, ends up wanting to steal the beta hydrogen. And the reason for that is because if you steal the beta hydrogen, it makes room on this carbon. That carbon gets to keep its bond. It, uh, it gets to keep all of its electrons. Uh, but the electrons in its bonds goes toward the leaving group and is able to kick that off. 
carbons. So you end up getting the same four carbons, one, two, three, four, but now you have a pi bond here and you don't have the chlorine anymore. Now that you might recognize is an E2 reaction. It's an elimination reaction. You had a chlorine and you don't need more, so you eliminated it. And notice two things are happening here at the same time. This base is stealing a hydrogen and the leaving group is leaving. So that's the reason for the two. Okay, so these are your two possibilities for what could happen when you shake up some sodium hydroxide with uh, one chlorobutane. So how can you tell if either of these reactions, any of these reactions happen? Well, in this original, in this original molecule, the only, uh, there's, the, I mean, you'll have the chlorine there. That's not one of the nine shadows you'd represent. So the whole thing is here, you would not have the type of shadows that you have in these other two molecules. Now, let's think about those first then. The functional group that appears at the bottom left is an alcohol. And so this, this molecule, the unique thing that will be in the IR spectrum of this molecule will be a broad, smooth, shadow or absorption between 3200 and 3600 wave numbers. That's, if you look back at the table that you'll want to memorize, that is the absorption that belongs to an alcohol. And so that's what's going to characterize that. Now if you look, you look at this one over here, what you'll notice is this carbon here has a hydrogen on it, and this bond absorbs at um, 3100 wave numbers. And you can see that's in the row for alkenes, uh, for alkenes in the table that you want to memorize. And so if you compare both of those with your reagents, this has no absorption or no, uh, no shadow, if you prefer, between anywhere between 3200 and 3600 wave numbers. And that includes 3100, of course. So that's how you can distinguish between these. If you shake this up and you're like, ah, finally, going to save the world with this reaction, and then you put a sample of your product under an IR spectrum and you don't get an absorption here, you know you were stuck with this reagent. If you get a broad, smooth absorption here, then you know you formed the alcohol. And if you get a sharp absorption at around 3100, you know you form the alkene. The truth is you're going to get both of these products. Uh, it'll be a, a kind of a mixed mess in your, in your product. But that's the reactions that happen that you'll want to remember for the test from Organic Chemistry 1, and it's how you can use IR spectroscopy to tell the difference between these things.